All right, hi, it's Daniel Murphy. We got this little maple here, whatever that is, probably 10 inches, DBH. See, it's got the co-dominant stems right there. Those stems are both about of equal size. The one on the left is maybe a little smaller. And they go up, they're pretty tight. It's a pretty tight crotch there. So that's gonna be a problem in years to come. What's gonna happen is this side's gonna get wider and this side's gonna get wider. And eventually right in the middle there, they're gonna start pushing on themselves. And that's gonna create a weakness and usually the non-dominant one, the weaker one or the one with the, the most uh, lean to it is it will just peel right off of there. So there's a aspect of trees called apical dominance. Apex, ap apical like apex, like the apex of a camera. It has to do with you know the exposure to light. So what we did here, rather than trying to make this big cut down here and induce all kinds of decay in the main trunk here, which would be gonna be a problem down the road, that would probably not be able to compartmentalize that big a cut. I mean, not by, by far. Now, you could I could have just cut it up here and just let a little decay maybe move through the trunk here or go on to the next one up. But in order to induce apical dominance in the right lead, which would basically stunt the growth of the left lead, I didn't have to make that big a cut. You can see that's the cut right there. <clears throat> so we shorten that side up a good bit. And it's still going to you know, reach for some light over here. Some of these side branches might kind of take off. They might have to be pruned up in the years to come. But basically what we're going to do is create a, a tree now where this becomes the main leader of the tree. And eventually what's going to happen is rather than these two sides pushing on each other e because they're growing equally, this one's going to get all fat and wide and this one's going to be stunted. And so this one will actually grow and start to wrap around and envelop this one a little bit instead of pushing on it pushing on each other one's going to tend to grow around the other and if, if if anything else there just won't be enough pressure between the two of them to create that weakness there this is you know the, the weakness is called included bark just in part another teaching piece as long as there's room at the base of that branch union which there's just a little room left here for those two sides when this puts on its growth ring and this puts on its growth ring they'll knit in the middle right there that that would be like a knitting there but eventually, it's going to be bark pushing against bark. There's going to be no room in the middle, no more room in the middle. This is why the V-shaped crotches, the very tight crotches, have much more of a tendency to be problematic than U-shaped crotches. Where there's room in the middle, it will, it will bond those two uh, part, the, the two uh, growth pa patterns on each, each side will actually lock in with each other and form a very strong bond there. But in any case, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that, that that's, that's called subordination pruning. We're basically subordinating this one side. We're making that left side the non-dominant side. And we're going to let that right side be the dominant side. And that'll be the main growth stem of the tree. And in subsequent years, we could take that down a little further. We can see how it grows in. You know, the, and here's the front of the yard anyhow. So aesthetically, it's not really going to matter much if that back piece gets, you know, gets... Uh, has a hole in it because you're not really going to be able to see it from anywhere that counts. That's just a pool area back there with some privacy trees around it. So aesthetically, the tree is going to be fine. And we've probably saved the tree problem, not about five or ten years, but 25 years from now, that tree would have a problem there. All right. Thanks for watching.